In this video, we're going to be taking a look at finding limits graphically and numerically. So looking at both ways of finding limits. Um, all right, so let's take a look at an introduction to the idea of limits, what they are. Uh, and first of all, limits, what they are not, are a value at, it's, it's a y value. They are not a y value at any given x value. Right, so for example, if you look at this function right here, you have x to the third minus one, all over x minus one. That is your function, and that's the blue line that we see here. And if you look at the value of x equals one, so right here, look up at your graph, boom, right there, your y value looks to be about three. So f of one is three, right? However, if you look at your function, if you plug in one into your function, you would get one to the third minus one, all over one minus one, which is zero over zero. And you cannot be divide by zero. That's a big no-no. Okay, we cannot divide by zero. So what happens on graphs sometimes that they don't exist in that point. So that's why I said a limit is not a value because this right here does not exist. So you have to look at what as your function approaches x equals one. So we're getting closer and closer and closer. What are the y values approaching? And we're gonna look at limits from the both sides as well. Uh, looking at what the white values because you can't plug the value in sometimes because the function does not exist at that point like in this graph here Okay, so let's take a look at uh, an example here. You have your function. It is x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 Okay, we're looking at several points near and around 0 because you notice you can't plug 0 in there uh, you end up getting 1 minus 1 on the, in the denominator, so you can't plug 0 in. So we have to use limits to find the value, approximately what is the value at that point uh, of 0. And so the first thing we're going to do is set up a table. So we're going to set up a table, and we're going to find values of y that lead up to 0, x equals 0. So let's, like for example, uh, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0. Point. You see how we're getting closer and closer to, and then we have 0. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 .01, and 0 0.1. Okay, so we're going to evaluate those values. You can use a graphing calculator, uh, put the equation in and then look at your table, uh, or you can input values of x in to figure out what's your value. However you want to do that, go ahead and get these um, values for y given those values of x. Pause the video and then come back. So then looking at your values, you can see if you're coming from the left hand side what it's approaching and coming from the right hand side what these values are approaching and they're approaching two from both sides so this limit right here is equal to two even though we could not plug zero in up here because you would get zero in your denominator Therefore, it doesn't exist at that point. So we have to look at limits to get an idea of what's that, what is that y value approaching at x equals 0. Okay, here's another one. We have a piecewise function. Now remember, these in here are your functions. So your two functions are, uh, so you could rewrite this if you wanted to. So it makes a little bit more sense. y equals 1, y equals 0 x does not equal 2, and at x equals 2. All right, so then you can go ahead and graph this. So if y equals 1, so let's do that, 1, 2. And if we graph the first one, let's graph this one up here, which is this one right here. That's y equals 1 everywhere except at x equals 2, because this is where everywhere where x is not equal to 2. So it's going to be basically be a hole at 2, 
and it would go everywhere else. And then it says right here on this one, it says y equals zero at two. So then there'd just be a point right there. Okay, so that's what our piecewise graph looks like. And it says find the limit of f of x as x approaches two. So if we were to write that out, it would look something like this. So you wanna find the limit of f of x. So that's this piecewise function here as x approaches two. Now the limit, remember, it's not the value at that point, it's the limit, because the value at that point is actually zero. Because here, if we were just to just find f of two, that would be zero. But the limit as x approaches two is actually equal to one, because it's as it approaches, as your function approaches to what's the y value, and that y value is one. Okay, so limits, they are a complex idea, but it's, it's very simple, uh, but it's so simple that it can be confusing, right? That's kind of how limits are. Now we're gonna talk about ways that limits can exist um, and how they can, it's easier to talk about how they can fail to exist. And there are actually three ways that we're gonna talk about uh, how they can fail to exist. Number one, uh, when the left and right hand limits aren't the same. For example, go ahead and graph this function on your graph here. So the absolute value of x all over x. So just graph this, the absolute value of x over x. You can use your graphing calculator to do that, that's fine. You can plug in values, so x equals negative one, negative two, negative three, plug values in. You can see that you can't plug zero in, so plug values right around it in. Pause the video, do that, and then come back. Now when you do that, uh, you have a horizontal line at y equals one and negative one, but the horizontal line at y equals one only exists when it's greater than zero. The y equals negative one only exists when it's no less than zero. And when you have those functions and you're looking at the limits, you notice the limits, let me do this in green, as I'm approaching, so it's the limit as x approaches zero of this is kind of what we're investigating. As I approach x equals zero from the right, my y value is equal to one, right? It's approaching one. But if I approach from the other side, it's approaching negative one, right? So we get two different answers. And that is the first way a limit will fail to exist. Okay, so the limit here, we would say, fails to exist. Oops, fails to exist. Because the limit from one side and the limit from the other side are not equal, it doesn't exist. Okay, the graph is broken. All right, let's look at another way. So the limit can fail to exist if the limits don't equal each other from one side and the other, so the graph is broken. Number two, if the um, graph has unbounded y values. So let's look at this one. Go ahead and graph this one. It's y equals one over x squared. Go ahead and graph this and then come back. So here's our graph and what it looks like. And we're looking at as x approaches zero. So the limit as x approaches zero. And you cannot plug zero in, right, to figure out what your y value is because a lot of times the limit and the y value will be the same. But in this case, you can't plug it in because it's undefined. So what we have to do is we have to look, okay, from the left, what is my y value approaching as I approach zero? And it's approaching infinity. And then from the right, it's also approaching infinity, right? Even though they're the same, they're both approaching the same. Well, infinity is not a number, but they're both approaching the same um, in the in the same direction, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that is unbounded, right? There is no uh, set defined value that that limit is. And so if the limit is unbounded, that means the as x approaches a number, y approaches either positive or negative infinity. This would be a limit that fails to exist.
okay? So the first way, if it's a broken graph, the limit from the left and the right aren't the same. And second one, if it's unbounded, where the y approaches infinity or negative infinity. So those are two of the ways that the limit can fail to exist. The third and final way is if you have this behavior that's really kind of crazy. Go ahead and graph in your graphing calculator sine of 1 over x. It, it's kind of uh, a little insane what it looks like, but graph it and then come back. So it looks kind of crazy. I know it'll look a lot different on your graph, but the point is right here in the middle, it goes up and down so fast, we call that the, the, that um, repetition, right? That behavior is oscillating. So it oscillates back and forth, up and down, up and down. And that function, it's moving so fast at x equals zero that you can't record any sort of y value, so the limit fails to exist. Okay, so if it's oscillating, it goes so fast that you can't even get a value, it fails to exist. The limit fails to exist. So that's the third way. All right, so the first way, the graph was broken. The limit from the left and the limit from the right don't, aren't the same. Second way, if it's unbounded, the limit is infinity or negative infinity, and then it fails to exist if it's an oscillating function. These are extremely rare. You'll really only see ones like 1 over x or cosine of 1 over x, I think. Um, but they're extremely rare, but that's just the third way that it could not exist. So three common types of behavior um, where it doesn't exist, and I've told you these multiple times. Uh, the first one is this, the limits from the sides. The each side are not equal. Uh, the second way we said the limits unbounded. If you need to draw examples there, you can, uh, but we did some examples. And then the third way is if it oscillates. Okay, those are the three ways that the limit can fail to exist. And now, looking at a definition of limits, I'm just going to keep it simple here. Uh, we're just going to do the limits as x approaches a value c of a function is equal to l. And now we're going to define the, the two uh, constants, the c and the l. So the c, that's just a value that's in the interval. Interval. Okay, and the L, that is your limit. Okay, that has to be a real number, which is why it could not be equal to infinity or negative infinity. It had to be a real number. Okay, and that C value has to be in the interval that you're looking at. So it has to be on the function, basically. It's pretty simple. All right, so that's how we're going to understand the uh, limits. And just to review, um, think back to yourself, okay, a limit, it's a simple idea, but it's so simple that it's complex, right? And this is one way you can kind of make sure you understand it is, what words would you use to explain it to somebody that comes into class tomorrow really having never used a limit, never thought about a limit? What words would you use? How would you show them what a limit is? We're going to be spending this entire chapter, chapter studying limits, so it's really important that we have a good foundation on what they are and um, how to define them and how to tell whether they exist or not at given points. And then you have to be able to find them numerically, graphically, and analytically. Numerically would be the tables, right? Can you construct tables to determine limits? And we did that on one of the examples. Graphically, can you determine from a graph what the limit is, even though it may not exist, like we had that hole in one of our graphs, uh, it may not exist, but you can still use the graph to approximate the limit at that point. And then analytically, meaning can you use the function? Sometimes you can plug it in, okay? A lot of these that we showed, you can't plug it in to find the y value, so you have to use either a table or the graph. But if you can plug it in, like if it says limit as x approaches 2, plug 2 in. And if that works, that's your limit. Right, but sometimes it doesn't work, so you have to use these other methods. 
And that's it for uh, this section 2.2, uh, finding the mix graphically and numerically.